Well, not every video results in success. And this is going to be one of those times where I am just going to walk away from this one. But I think it's a good learning opportunity to see what went wrong with the CD player. And uh, I mean, it could be fixed, but it's just not worth doing. So let's see what went wrong. Here we go. Sony 5 disc CD changer that the disc tray is uh, jammed. So let's find out why this one's broken. Pop the cover off this thing. Of course, my camera decided to go into manual focus, but we'll rectify that shortly. Sorry about that. Ah, there's a disc in it. So somehow I think what happened is when the tray was open, someone moved the tray. Ah, it's jammed. That's why. Let's find out why. Okay, so I'm going to have to realign this mechanism. We'll start by removing the disc. So to remove the tray, we remove these screws on the side. So to do that, I'm going to remove the front cover and these other two arms <clears throat> that hold the mechanism in place so that I can lift the table off completely. Now there will be a flexible PC board that connects to the main chassis from this tray because as you'll see, there are sensors on here to, to tell the mechanism what this position is there and whether there's any disc in the slot. There's an optical sensor here that will scan the discs as they're moving into place to tell the system whether the slot has a disc in it or it's empty. And then this one here is an optical encoder which tells the microcontroller as it's rotating which position is coming into place. If you'll notice on the bottom, on the bottom side of the turntable assembly, you've got these slots here. These count the pulses for which disc, right? See, disc five, or where's disc one? I guess this is disc one here, one pulse. And then the next one is disc two, two pulses. The next one is disc three, there's three pulses. The next one is disc four, there's four pulses. And finally, disc five, which will have five pulses. And that's how it determines. And then these small little slots here, these provide a, a, a Basically, it's like a, a, a strobe signal as it's rotating so that it knows, okay, we're coming into position and then it counts. One, two, three, four, five, and then the next series will tell it when it's right in the correct position. So obviously, when it's stopping, it's probably going to stop in the middle one. <clears throat> so if it counts five pulses, one, two, three, four, five, and then one pulse, two pulse, three pulse. If it gets to the third one, okay, it's gone too far. That way, it can, it can back up and know that when it hits the center pulse here that the disc is absolutely centered over top and then it can operate the other motor to raise and lower the table assembly, the, the actual disc chucking assembly. Looks like there are flat spots on this gear. You can see this gear is kind of flattened out. I don't know if I'm going to be able to straighten these 
sometimes you can straighten these teeth a bit if they're not broken right off. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that or not, <clears throat> or whether I'm going to have to try and find a new gear for this. I mean, this is something that probably could be 3D printed, but um, I don't have a 3D printer. I don't know anybody that has a 3D printer, and I'm certainly not going to pay somebody 20 or $30 to print a gear for this. Although the local shop that carries VCR gears and parts and stuff might have one. I'll have to check and see. But I'm going to first of all see whether I can straighten up these teeth and uh, get a good enough get good enough contact with the worm gear here that this uh, CD player will function. Uh, this machine was given to me, so it's mine now. So I don't want to put any money into it because you know even if I were to sell it, what am I going to get for something like this? <clears throat> I might get 20 bucks for a CD player like this. Right, so you can go down to you can go down to the Value Village and pick them up for twelve ninety nine. So you know it's uh, not unfortunately it's something that's not worth putting any money into. If I can make it work and play some CDs, and I might be able to give it to somebody. Right. Here's the flexible cable I was talking about. It's right back here. So we'll just unplug this one. And that's what interconnects the board here on the actual turntable with the rest of the mechanism. For that matter, I can put this piece back on at this point because it actually has to be put on before I put the thing back together. So this is the home position now. When the cam gear rotates, it'll bring the table assembly up for play. To eject the tray to exchange discs, the cam gear continues to turn, which turns this gear, which will, to that stop point there, that'll eject your, your tray for changing the disc. Then when you close it, it brings the tray back in returns to this position. When you stop and you want to full eject, the gear turns this direction which lowers down and now this outside portion of the fan gear now makes connection or, or greets the <laughs> the uh, uh, disc tray and pushes the tray out. I'm going to uh, set this thing back together and see whether it works. Just say it's my unit, so it's no big deal. No big deal. Put the tray in there, gonna plug this connector in. Push this all the way in so it's fully seated and fully closed like that. And I'm just going to put the side pieces back on it and I'll test it and see if it opens and closes.
you know what that gear is jammed the gear that's under here that is stripped that's going to have to be replaced it's causing the belt to slip because the the teeth are, are bent and it's causing uh, excessive slipping of that belt either that or it's just the belt that's slipping itself could be that too I'll try changing the belt but you can hear the belt slipping it's like it's trying to turn but it's not it could be just the belt is slipping we'll try a new belt on that and see what happens in fact the more I see the symptom now as to what happened I think that's probably what happened is the belt wore out the turntable wouldn't turn and the guy that had it got frustrated and tried to turn it by hand thinking that he could get his disc out when his disc was actually still chucked and clamped in place I think that's probably what happened was that uh, the belt failed itself so we just take that out like that lift this through like this unplug it now we can get the turntable off I can try finding a belt that belt appears to be slipping so let's see if I can find another one of these so here's one that should probably be okay let's put this belt in and see whether it has enough torque to turn this thing or is it going to slip I think what I'll also do is I'm going to put some lubricant on the actual shaft itself there's plenty of lubricant on the gear as you can see but I'm going to put some lubricant on the shaft Well, that spins okay. Gonna lubricate this gear. That's a bit better. So we'll put the new belt on. tray back in this time I'll, I'll plug in the power before I Secure everything down and just see if this will turn. Because if the turntable won't turn, it's not much point in putting it back together. Okay, tray is in. Let's just see if it'll turn. Nope. So, what I'm going to have to do is try and find a gear for this one, but uh, at least we now know what the problem with it is. That the problem with this is this, this gear is damaged, and I think probably what happened to the gear was the owner of this thing. The table wasn't turning properly because the belt was slipping. And I think probably what happened is he tried to turn it manually to move the disc and he broke this gear. I'm just taking this belt out. There's no point in leaving. 
the new belt in. Unless I can find a gear to fix this thing, which I, if I can't, then this unit's probably going to become a donor machine where I can pick the laser off it and so forth to make other ones work. So, keep that in mind. If this is sticking, uh, someone turns this, um, forces the, the turntable on here, they round off the bottom part of this gear and uh, then the teeth start to slip. I mean, it, it's turning, but it's just, it's stiff because now the teeth are actually grabbing the sides of the worm gear. So this one goes back together, not repaired, and it will become a parts donor machine for me. Because I think this has a KSS that this one has. So if I have a CD player that's eating a KSS 390, now I know where to find one. Thanks for watching. We'll uh, catch you in the next one. Bye.